you, brother, have to lead the interaction, but it's based on when she's ready. You're leading where we're going to dinner. You're leading how often we're hanging out. You're leading everything in the doing respect based off what she's being. Is she being attracted to you? Is she being sexual? Is she being affectionate? Then and only then do you take her there. Welcome to the Unapologetic Man Podcast. The only podcast that's all about self-improvement, confidence, success, women, and being a man without making any apologies for it. What is up, gentlemen? Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the UMP. I really do appreciate it. If you've been listening for a long time, you know what to do, brother. Smack yourself on the ass because you're a goddamn champion, bro. Songs will be written about you that will be sung around campfires for generations to come. And you will evolve to the point where you no longer sneeze in your armpit. Because I hate it when people do that. You ever see somebody just go, hachoo, right into their armpit? You're like, bro, are you like a mad scientist or something? Don't do that, boys. Just sneeze into your hands. It looks really nerdy when you do that. I saw a guy do it the other day and I was like, bro, you got to up your sneeze game. No more sneezing into the armpit. No more sneezing into the elbow pit. Straight into the hands. And for God's sakes, gentlemen, run a tight battleship, wipe that shit off, and hopefully wash your hands afterward. Going to the bathroom and seeing dudes come out who don't wash their hands is, in my opinion, one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen. Have you guys ever seen that meme where there's two dudes shaking each other's hands and then there's like a before picture where both of them are itching their ball sacks? That's literally how it is with some dudes. So come on, boys. Run a tight battleship, gentlemen. Today's episode is really interesting and I want you to concentrate because I'm going to go through a little bit of philosophy, but this philosophy is super gangster. In fact, I just thought of this before I started recording this episode and I was like, yo, that's definitely why it is that you have to let women lead. Now, that title was supposed to shock you because for 600 episodes, I've been saying you have to lead. You have to be masculine, lead women to where they want to be led. But there's a very interesting twist to that concept of you leading that actually makes it that the woman leads, but only in a certain way. And I'm going to explain that in depth. I actually just got an email from one of my current clients and I want to read it to you guys because this is a testament to the sheer power of my NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, to remap your brain. So I'm going to read this quick thing from my boy Gio, then we're going to jump into the content. Gio says, I am following your NLP protocols every day before bed and have increased my contacts with women at least 5x more than before I met you or started the program. In fact, my schedule is now extremely full while I try to balance work, life, studying the program, and dates, LOL. I feel more confident than ever before, and I haven't even finished your program yet. Just the fact that I now feel confident enough to start a conversation with any girl, no matter how hot she is, has boosted my self-esteem and self-worth exponentially. It's been incredible, and I can't thank you enough for this program. It is absolutely amazing, and the way you present it has so far been easy to follow and extremely effective. Hope you're doing well, brother, and I look forward to the rest of the program and your guidance. Thank you, Mark. Well, thank you, Gio. That's a testament, gentlemen, to what's possible in my three-month coaching program. Three months to turn you into an absolute girl magnet. My only question for you is, why haven't you applied yet? Why haven't you taken the chance to talk to us and explore if my NLP dating program, a three-month program, can change your life the way it does for man after man after man. I just don't get it, bro. Unless you're sneezing in your armpit, you need to come and work with me. Let's have a conversation. What's the harm in that, right? Put in an application by clicking on the link below. I'll tell you what, brothers. The worst nightmare that will ever happen to you is getting to the end of your life and saying, what if? What if? I had just developed that skill set to get women. And what if Mark's coaching program was the answer as it's been for so many men? I don't know about you, but I don't want to live my life that way. I definitely don't want to die that way. So let's explore it together. What's the harm in that? Click the link in the description below. Apply right now. All right, gentlemen. So as I said, we're going to get a little bit philosophical with male and female archetypes, male and female energy. And I'm going to explain to you from that why it is that you actually have to let women lead. But you don't let them lead in the way that you may be thinking. You let them lead in the way of you lead them to where they want to be led. And I'm going to explain all this. 
So to begin with, we have to understand that masculine energy is a doing energy. And when I say doing, I mean that you like things, you like cars, you like motorcycles, you like BMX bikes. And if you're a champion, you like monster energy, supercross, dirt bikes, ripping over jumps, ripping through berms, because that's literally the sickest shit ever created by mankind. But men like things. Think about this one. Women talk face to face. Men talk shoulder to shoulder. Why do we talk shoulder to shoulder? Because we're talking about things. We're talking about missions. We're talking about doing something together. And it's because of men that this society exists the way that it exists. Now, it's not to say women don't have worth, but right now I'm talking about men. So if you're a female listening, don't worry, I'm going to get to you. But let me pump up all the ball sacks listening right now because you, brother, if you're a man, are a fucking champion. We built the skyscrapers. We built the trains. We built the airplanes. We built the infrastructure of this motherfucker because we are doers. That's what masculine energy is. Feminine energy, on the other hand, is the energy of being. Women are very good at communicating. They're good at feeling. They're really good at having relationships. They're intuitive as hell. And we could say that they're actually closer to God because they actually embody being. Whereas us men, we're very mind-based. We are doers. We don't understand being very well. We don't understand relationships very well. Part of the reason you may be listening to this. So we understand that men are ensconced in doing and women are ensconced in being. And this is going to play into my overall point. So as women are ensconced in being, they understand relationships. And here's a big fact about women that I always want you to remember. If you try to advance the relationship, before she's ready to advance the relationship, she's going to lose all attraction for you. Many of you guys are nodding right now because you've seen it before. If you try to push her into an outcome that you hope will manifest, she's going to lose attraction for you and blow you out. You tell her that you like her before she likes you. You're done. You try to kiss her before she's ready to be kissed. You're done. You try to have sex with her before she's ready to have sex. A lot of you guys are laughing right now. You're done. You try to make your girlfriend, you try to marry her, any of that bullshit before she's ready, you are done. So when we consider that and when we bring in the example I told you before about women are being and men are doing, women are the being part of your relationship and men are the doing part of your relationship. Let me explain. Women always have to dictate what you guys are being together. Are you being flirtatious? It's on her terms. Are you being affectionate, touching each other's hands, maybe hugging a little bit? That's on her terms. Are you being intimate, kissing, having sex, etc.? on her terms? Are you being in a relationship, once again, on her terms? Why is this? Because as I just said, if you try to pull a woman into the outcome that you hope will manifest, such as kissing her before she's ready, she loses all attraction for you because women, the feminine, understands this archetype quite naturally. They understand that it's only on their terms that you may advance to the next stage. It's like a flower. It must open naturally. You cannot force open the petals of a flower, as they said in that awesome movie, Three Amigos. Jefe, you cannot force open the petals of a flower. You must let it open naturally. And then the other guy's like, no, no, jefe, when you want the woman, you take the woman. Which guy do you think was right? It's the guy who said you must let it open naturally, and that's what you have to do. If you try to force it by leading in the wrong way, she is going to be turned off by you. This is why many Hollywood movies get it wrong, where the guy confesses his love for her, blows smoke up her ass, fluffs her feathers, tell her how amazing she is and how he's in love with her, and then she magically realizes that she's in love with him too, and she falls for him and they fall in love. That's usually not how it works. Now, occasionally you'll get lucky where you can tell your feelings to a woman and she happens to reciprocate those feelings and then bam, it works out. But if you do it at the wrong time because you didn't read the signs correctly and you're impatient to get your dick wet, for example, I know your dick is so dry, it's gonna audition for the next movie of Dune, but if you're that thirsty and you try to force open the petals of the flower, it turns her off because she understands that your job is to do. In the relationship, women are the being essence. And what she is being, you have to do. And this is why I always say, you need to lead women to where they want to be led. 
So essentially, you're leading the doing aspect of things. You're leading where we're going to dinner. You're leading how often we're hanging out. You're leading everything in the doing respect based off what she's being. Is she being attracted to you? Is she being sexual? Is she being affectionate? Is she being the kind of girl who wants to be in a relationship with you? Then and only then do you take her there. Now, this is where her leadership stops. She gives you the green light, such as, for example, she wants you to ask for her phone number. She's going to give you very clear signs most of the time. Some women are harder to read than others, but most of the time they give you clear signs. Laughing at jokes that aren't funny, touching you, asking you personal questions, leaning in, giving you the general deer in the headlights expression, and basically being interested in you as a man. Those are green lights of her wanting to lead you to the realization that you need to lead her to taking her phone number. Then you guys are on the date. She's leaning in once again, laughing at jokes that aren't funny, kind of looking at your mouth, then your eyes, then your mouth again, getting real close, insinuating she wants to what? Kiss you. She is leading in the way that she's ready to be taken there. And you need to lead her there based on her signs. So women, once again, are the being element of a relationship Men are the doing element. She gives you the signs, you take her there. Now we see time and time again, guys who get really excited about a girl, they start texting her too much, they start wanting to hang out with her too much, and this is the basis for my 80-100 rule, or it could be said 8-10 rule. What you wanna do is give her 80% of what she wants from you because if you come off as too thirsty, and you don't leave her wanting more, she's gonna get over you, as many of you guys have experienced. And this too goes into the being element of what she is. You want to let her be excited, be anticipatory, be feeling like she can't get enough of you. That's part of what she needs to be to be enticed. If you go to a buffet and you just blow your asshole out because you're just eating pizza and ice cream and churros and salad and you're just full of it, are you going to be excited to go to the buffet again? Of course not. You need to leave the woman wanting more. It's just like a cat. And this is why I say women are a lot like cats. You pet them a little bit and then you push them away. Give them a little scratch under the fucking chin. Do a couple swipes across the back and then ignore them. What happens? They start purring, rubbing against your leg. But if you pet them too much, like you're sitting there fucking petting the thing, it's going to bone out. It's going to run away from you and say, dude, get away from me, stalker Texas Ranger. I want nothing to do with you. It's the same with women, gentlemen. Women need to be into you for you to do the right thing and take them to where they want to be led. So what do we do? We always focus on attraction. Attraction, 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 dumping gamuts on them, value, storytelling, all the stuff that I teach in this podcast, but more importantly, my three-month coaching program to get them attracted to you. And guys, here's something I really want you to understand. We do not hit on women in the very beginning. We do not hit, quote unquote, on women until they're attracted to us. So what we do is we go up innocently having a conversation, being funny, telling stories, breaking rapport, busting her chops a little bit, teasing her, asking her great questions to get her into her emotions, which by the way, look on my Instagram page. I just posted an excellent post about the kinds of questions you should ask women. I'm going to give you a couple of them here. What was the best day of your life? If you could do anything without any chance of failure, what would it be? If you could have a billboard on the side of the road, what would it say on it? What is your favorite memory and how did it feel when that happened? When you're doing these kinds of things, in addition to breaking rapport, busting your chops, telling stories, being fun, without hitting on her, without expressing any interest whatsoever, outside of interest in the conversation, she is finally allowed the space to be in her feminine, taking you in, analyzing if she likes you or not. Because going back to my previous episode, what is attraction like? Attraction is like a dimmer switch, kind of goes up, kind of goes down based on your behavior. If you're hitting on her saying, hey, can I get your phone number? Hey, let's hang out. And she doesn't know enough about you to have open naturally like a flower, she's going to get turned off by that because you're being too thirsty. And look at that word, being. You're in the feminine role now. You're the one who's being thirsty, being eager. No, 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 no. Step back and do. Do the game. 
Run your gambits, tell your stories. You're a man of doing, just like the champions who built this country and who built this world. Men are the essence of doing, that's what masculinity does. So you go in without any expectations. I want nothing from you except to have a cool talk with you. Yeah, you may be cute, but what else do you have? You could even say to her, hey, I wanted to come meet you because I thought you were cute. Are you interesting? And then go on from there, letting her know that you have higher standards and you're not trying to hit on her. You're not trying to get anything from her. Some women listening might be like, oh my God, if a guy said that to me, I'd be so turned off. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Unless you're some alien woman, some outlier, compared to the tens of thousands of women that me and my boys have talked to, that line works when you deliver it with confidence. That's the key, confidence. So you're talking to her, you're giving value. Once again, you're not hitting on her, letting her be in her feminine. Then she's like, hmm, I'm attracted to this guy. Am I attracted to this guy because it's a logical explanation? No, I'm attracted to this guy because he makes me feel a certain way. Now she's starting to be attracted to you, and now you can express some attraction towards her. How much of her attraction do you express back to her? 80%. Because if you do too much and you're too thirsty, she's going to lose attraction for you. So women lead the entire interaction as well as the relationship on the channel of being. You as the man have to take her there because we don't want her to lead you there. We want her to lead in the way that she's giving signs that that flower is ready to open. You read the signs and then you take her there. That's how to keep a woman satisfied. So do women lead the interaction? Yeah, in a lot of ways they do. But ultimately speaking, you know what I'm going to say. You, brother, have to lead the interaction, but it's based on when she's ready. And in that respect, her beingness is the thing that leads. Lead women to where they want to be led and they will always get attracted to you. Gentlemen, if this opened your eyes a little bit and you're like, oh shit, this guy's got some knowledge, then I encourage you to apply for my three-month coaching program. We are now accepting applications. All you have to do is click the link in the description below. Brother, I want to put to you once again, what if you get to the end of your life and you didn't get the kind of success that you really wanted with women? You saw so many hot girls walk out of your life because you made excuses. I don't know what to say. I'm not good enough for her. She's too hot for me. I don't want to get rejected. Do you understand that those are all just belief systems? They're all in your head. And just like my boy Gio, who's literally five weeks through a 12-week program, he's like, my confidence has never felt like this before. Thank you for this program. Thank you for the NLP. I can't wait to see what's next. What if that happened for you, brother? What would your life be like? Imagine it. Imagine the hottest girl that you just masturbated to on Pornhub with your frequent masturbator platinum card in your bed. That could be your reality. My question for you is, do you have the balls to explore this? A lot of guys don't apply. You know why? They say it's because of money. They say I don't have time. They say, oh, I don't need that. Truth is, they're afraid. Afraid of being judged by other people for taking a program like this. Afraid of approaching women and expressing interest, which by the way, you should only be expressing interest in the conversation. They're afraid. And I want to ask you, are you afraid? Why haven't you applied yet? Hey, maybe you don't like me. You think I'm full of shit. That's okay. But if it's for any other reason, I have to say this. Many times, all your excuses are lies. How are you lying to yourself, brother? I'm telling you something right now. This program is not going to be around forever. I am a limited asset, and as I talked about in my 600th episode, I feel a calling on the periphery to do something else. So if you've been putting off working with me, now's the time to shit or get off the pot. Women are attracted to trigger pullers. Are you a trigger puller? If you are, apply right now, because I'll tell you what, trigger pullers are the kind of guys that get laid, and guys who make excuses, procrastinate, and stagnate because of fear are guys who don't get laid. It is literally that simple. Gentlemen, I do appreciate you listening. I drop podcasts on Mondays and Thursdays, so please stay tuned for the next one, and I will see you in the next episode.